Welcome back. Let's take you through sports news now. The Flying Eagles will now battle Tanzania in a 2015 African Youth Championship, Championship second round of qualifiers after the Ngorongoro Heroes eliminated Kenya. Both teams had played out a goal as draw in Kenya three weeks ago before Tanzania edged out the tie at home on penalties after another scoreless draw. In the meantime, the English Premier League, Chelsea dented Liverpool's dream of a first title in 24 years and kept their own title hopes alive with a 2-0 victory at Anfield. The Blues led on the stroke of half-time when Reds' captain, Steve Gerrard, slipped, allowing Demba Bar to take the lead. Catastrophe for the Liverpool skipper! And Chelsea are back in the title race here! A gift of the cruelest type. That is horrible for Steven Gerrard. Your heart weeps for him. But Mourinho has his moment. Well, having escaped from the callous chance on the corner just moments before this, this is just the last thing you would expect. Steven Gerrard to have a little loss of concentration. Aimed in towards Aspas. Out by Callas. Sturridge squeezed off it by William, and Torres has half the field to himself. What a man, what a moment, what a time to seal it. He's put in William, and Chelsea are right back in the race. Still in the English Premier League, Manchester City took the Liverpool slip to get their title bid back on track with a 2-0 victory away to Crystal Palace. The Palace had been looking to claim another big scalp after climbing into the top half on the back of five straight wins, but Edwin Zeko opened the scoring after just four minutes. On to tennis now, Japan's Kei Nishikori clinched has his fifth career title as he became the first Japanese to win the Barcelona Open with a 6-2, 6-2 victory over Santiago Giraldo. Nishikori, returning to action after almost a month out with a groin injury, revealed in an hour and 13 minutes. from sports news now in front of a crowd of hundreds of thousands of people pope francis today declared popes john paul ii and john the 23rd as saints of the catholic church relics of each man a container of blood from john paul and a piece of skin from john were taken were placed near the altar and pope francis paid tribute to the two saints as priests bishops and popes of the 20th century It is an event that has been anticipated for weeks. Pope Francis, in a rare, unprecedented move considered part of reforms for the Catholic Church, canonized Pope John the 23rd and Pope John Paul the Second. In his homily, Pope Francis described the pair as men of courage who bore witness to God's mercy. He also paid tribute to the efforts of John XXIII and John Paul II to renew and strengthen the Church. He said that after deliberating, consulting and praying for divine assistance, quote, we declare and define blessed John XXIII and John Paul II be saints and we enroll them among the saints, decreeing that they are to be venerated as such by the whole Church. Pope Francis' predecessor, Pope Benedict XVI, was also present, making it the first time a reigning and retired Pope have celebrated Mass together in public. But the canonization, usually a once-in-a-lifetime experience, has been criticized by some as being too hasty. A candidate for sainthood would normally have to pass a rigorous test, which begins at least five years after their death. 
and includes a verification of two miracles. Pope Francis bent the rules for canonization of John the 23rd, deciding that only one miracle was needed to make him saint. John Paul II, at his death, was called a saint by many who attended the funeral. His successor, former Pope Benedict, waived the church rule on the waiting period. But both popes are considered instrumental in shaping the current pontiff's groundbreaking reign. Pope John XXIII, who reigned from 1958 to 1963, is a hero to liberal Catholics for having convened the Second Vatican Council. The meetings brought the church into the modern era by allowing mass to be celebrated in local languages rather than in Latin and by encouraging greater dialogue with people of other faiths, particularly Jews. And then Pope John Paul II, between 1978 and 2005, helped topple communism through his support of Poland's solidarity movement. His defense of core church teaching heartened conservatives after the turbulent 1960s. As many as 150 cardinals, a thousand bishops, and 6,000 priests, and a massive crowd of more than a million people attended the Mass celebrating the canonization alongside delegates from more than a hundred countries around the world. Well, South Africans are celebrating the 20th year since the first multiracial democratic elections in the country. British monarch Queen Elizabeth II was among world leaders who paid tribute to the country on its journey so far. President Jacob Zuma, who attended the event on the lawns of the Union buildings in Pretoria, told the nation that the freedom enjoyed today was not won freely and so must be guarded jealously as the nation continues its journey to a better life. And the main news again. Rainstorm has destroyed 84 houses in Dorowa village. Residents are now squatting with relatives in their homes and the state government has taken inventory of the damages. Also, the Vatican has declared Pope John Paul II and John XXIII saints in front of a massive crowd in Rome. The Mass was attended by 150 priests, 1,000 bishops, 6,000, uh, 150, and hundreds of thousands of Catholic faithful are present at St. Peter's Basilica earlier today. That's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks for watching. I am Amaranta.